Hello everyone. Okay, so if we're going to do another shootout, we need a big intro. on the Epiphone is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with it at all. The QC on the Gibson is utter rubbish. It's very, very poor. It would be impossible to do a blindfold challenge on these because you'd be able to smell when you were playing the Gibson. Uh, it's finished well. You have no complaints about it. Apart from maybe it isn't a Gibson. And we're back. Right, so today we're going to compare the Gibson Original Series Les Paul Jr. with its cheaper sibling, the Epiphone inspired by Gibson Les Paul Jr. Um, so we buy all the guitars here at the Guitaristas. The Gibson Les Paul Jr. cost £1,199 and the Epiphone here just £299. Both of the guitars have been reviewed individually on the channel. I'll put the links below. If you haven't seen those, you might want to check those out. Um, there's some uh, interesting stuff there, I hope, already. G Gibson and Epiphone, I believe, are owned by the same company. But the Gibsons are made in the USA and the Epiphones are made in China at a cost. Some of the materials are different, obviously. Some of the manufacturing process is different, as you'd expect. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna nerd out over some of the finer detail and and see if we can work out how much difference there is, and um, if the the nine hundred pound extra that the Gibson cost is justified. So first things first, I've got both guitars beside me here. I'm gonna dig in and out, grab one, grab the other, willy nilly, as I try and illustrate what I'm talking about. We'll have some shots that we'll, we'll, we'll drop in as well so that you can see what we're talking about as we talk about it. This stuff is both off of the spec sheet and, and what I'm observing with the guitars, okay? So some of it's directly off the spec sheets from Gibson and Epiphone, and some of it is, you know, what we can surmise ourselves by, by a closer look up. So both bodies are made from mahogany. Uh, the, the Epiphone, because it's got an opaque finish, it's had this veneer added to the top to, to hide the joins in the wood. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's a really nice, you know, smooth finish. It's, it's finished in polyurethane, which is very tough, hard wearing and, um, and easy to work with material. So we're told. Onto the Gibson, which is a solid black nitrocellulose finish. This particular guitar, I'll just see if I can see on the camera. You might be able to see from that straight away. You'll see there's some scratching on this guitar. If you look at the ind individual review we did on this, you'll find out this guitar is subject to some ongoing discussion, so we say, to try and find out what happened to it. The Gibson weighs in at 8.23 five pounds and the epiphone weighs in at 7.825 so the gibson is a little bit heavier the neck profile on these is is both the spec sheets call it vintage 50s the measurements differ however the the gibson's got a chunkier neck and it's what i would personally call 50s 
whereas the Epiphone's more of a normal flat, and I would, I would in fact call the Epiphone more of a medium C, um, or medium D, maybe. Medium, anyway, <laughs> I don't know. C or D, not sure. Um, but yeah, the uh, people, a, a lot, I've heard a lot of people say that the, the neck on the Epiphone draw is really chunky, but it's not compared to the Gibson and to, compared to chunky necks. This is, it's kind of medium-y really, might be on the chunky side, but let's have a look at the actual measurements side by side. The nut on both Gibson and Epiphone is referred to as Graftec. Fingerboard on these, the Gibson's got uh, the traditional rosewood. As you can see, it's got a nice kind of dark rosewood. Nice looking fingerboard on this. There's no binding on either of these guitars, incidentally, anywhere. So the fingerboard on the Epiphone is made from Indian laurel, which I believe is a more sustainable material. Um, and as you can see, it's got it's got some figuring on it, which is not, not unattractive, I don't think, personally. Both the guitars have got medium jumbo frets. The tuners on these uh, are both vintage deluxe tuners. The only difference appears to be that the Epiphone has got Epiphone Deluxe stamped on them and the Gibson has got Gibson Deluxe stamped on them. The buttons are slightly different colour. Uh, in fact, the Gibsons are slightly whiter than the than the uh, than the Epiphones. So mm, I don't know what to make of that. I don't know which ones I prefer. Uh, bridge hardware. The Epiphones got the compensated lightning bar tailpiece, which was introduced by Gibson around 1963, whereas the Gibson has got the non-compensated wraparound bridge as per the original, so vintage correct. Both have got Dog Ear P90 pickups, which we measured for output. The Epiphone measures 8.69 ohms, and the Gibson measures 7.68 ohms. And we measured the pickup height, the distance between the pickup and the strings on both guitars, and they're identical. So we looked in the control cavities. Uh, they both got CTS hand wire parts. The Epiphone, however, has got a plug-in pickup as opposed to a soldered one. Um, the Gibson's got an orange drop capacitor, uh, whereas the Epiphone's just got a, a, a fairly standard one. What was interesting is that the, the Epiphone's got a shielded control cavity cover uh, whereas the Gibson's just a bit of plastic. So that was interesting. So there you go. So there's uh, the, the nerdy specky stuff. There, there's a lot of similarities between these two. So let's plug them in and, um, and have a play around with some knobs and uh, see if we can identify any big differences in the sound. Eh? See you in a minute. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do the guitars back to back, play little loop sections with the settings on each guitar and the amp and the pedals identical for each little section then we'll move on. I may, may sort of talk, talk you through what I'm doing or you'll be able to see from the camera shots what I'm doing on the guitars but I'm just going to start with a very simple little thing. The volume and the tone controls on 7, just under 7 on this to start with. I've got um, a Klon KTR drive pedal on, but at the moment, because I've backed off the volume, it sounds quite clean. The great thing with these is if, when you dig in, you can get that. But when you back off, just let's just start with a nice little clean loop. And then I'll, I'll swap guitars, I'll cut it all together so you'll be hearing one and then the other back to back. And uh, hopefully that will give us a, a sort of direct comparison um, between um, the guitars. <laughs> That's the point, isn't it? Here we go. <laughs>
Yeah. So there's an obvious similarity. They sound really pretty close, these guitars. The Gibson has got um, a certain robustness to it, both in feel and sound. It's a slightly heavier guitar anyway, as, as you'll have seen from the, the stats we did. So that could in itself make the difference. It's got a chunkier neck, um, so that would affect the sound. The pickups are slightly different, and that too can, can affect the sound. I think it's fairly well sort of stated that, that lower output pickups um, can, can have a more airy, defined sound than um, than the kind of higher gain ones. So when you get the high gain, the higher gain sounds, there's there's less difference. There's less noticeable difference. You know the guitars both sound. You know if you if you crank a chord with these both. <laughs> And then do the same on the Gibson. There's less noticeable difference, obviously, you know, with gain. So, and, and I, I imagine, to be honest with you, I imagine most people are, are using these guitars for high gain rock and roll punk, you know, stuff like that anyway, it's what they're designed for really, they're not designed for clean stuff. I mean, I, I've kind of tried to give you a, to show you that they can do that. You know, they clean up like anything if you if you turn the volume down. Um, anyway, back to, back to the point, you can feel the extra weight of the Gibson immediately. And I think, and the neck, the neck on the Gibson is really nice, uh, and this is not not nice, not not nice. It's not not nice. It's nice and uh, comfortable. The Gibson is more of a handful. I, I personally find the Gibson more comfortable the neck because it's it's round and the um, the Epiphone is is kind of. It's, it's got a, a kind of more of a D shape. This is a C shaped. I'd say this is a C shape, that's a D shape. I have ordered one of them measuring things to show neck profiles, but it hasn't arrived yet. If it does arrive in time, I'll, uh, I'll do a little cut in here. Is it there? Yeah. Okay. Um, it didn't arrive. Oh, it did arrive. Um, this is really nice and comfortable. When you're, when you're, when you're playing the Gibson, Oh, it's that bloody smell. You can smell, you can smell that you're playing a Gibson. It would be impossible to do a blindfold challenge on these because you'd be able to smell when you were playing the Gibson. So Anderton's guys, I think they cheat a lot, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm just saying. This feels nice. It feels nice when you're playing it. There's something about a Gibson, this Gibson anyway. Aesthetics aside, because you know this is, you know, the, the, I mean, if you're comparing like for like, regardless of the manufacturing processes, the QC on the Epiphone is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with it at all. The QC on the Gibson is utter rubbish. It's very, very poor for a guitar, an extra 900 pounds, don't forget. It's an extra 900 pounds. Um, it's, it's disgraceful, to be honest with you. And it is this guitar, and I still, if you look at the, the film I made on this guitar specifically, it's an ongoing query at the moment with Gibson and with Peach Guitars I bought it from, you know. Really, is, what happened to this? Was this done at the shop? Was it done at Gibson? Did someone miss it? It's appalling. I'll stop going on about it now. 
but this isn't the end of the story so you know if, if you haven't subscribe and, and watch out for the follow-up to this to see you know, what happened to my guitar is this my last Gibson or not um, anyway but apart from that it sounds great this guitar but it's 200 pound the Epiphone also sounds great Nothing wrong with it at all. It's got a, a brighter sound to it, you can hear. It's got a brighter sound to it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's brighter. So it's definitely got a different frequency range. Um, I'm not really good enough at that sort of stuff to identify what it is probably but i'd say probably the the gibson's got more mids coming through there um and i would put that down to the body to the construction it's 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 a heavier guitar it's got a different finish you can ignore the pots because they're the same the pickups yeah yeah i mean maybe you could change them it would be interesting to swap the pickups over and see how much difference that makes. I'm not going to do that, <laughs> mess around like that, but, or maybe I will, I don't know. The biggest difference can only be the body, the construction of the body. Things like the, so the tuners are identical, so forget about them. The pots are the same. The pickups probably wouldn't make that much difference, but it, you can change pickups easily. The material that the bridge is made out might make a difference. That could be a big factor, but beyond that, it, it you know it can only really be the biggest factor would be the the body. So I'm I'm trying to summarise this now. I'm trying to I'm trying to come to some sort of conclusion, but um, I'm not sure I can. There's something about the Gibson. That Gibson, well, I mean, this particular Gibson, I suppose, there's something about this particular Gibson that is nice, that feels nice. It feels nice to play it. Um, but at it, 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 the back of your mind, the, the whole time is how expensive it was and all the things that are wrong with it. Um, with the Epiphone, I, I mean, I've said this before, it, it, this costs £299, a guitar that costs this amount of money, it doesn't owe you anything at all. It's pure joy, uh, it's finished well, you have no complaints about it, apart from maybe it isn't a Gibson, if that matters to you. So, I can summarise by saying the Epiphone, it's brilliant. But it's not a Gibson. The Gibson is flawed, but it's a Gibson. If you were gonna, if you were gonna score the guitars on plus and minus points, the Epiphone would win because there's nothing not to like. There's nothing wrong with it. You can't, you can't criticise the Epiphone at all. It might not sound the same as the Gibson. Uh, it might, it might lack a bit of refinement. But you could, you could tweak your setup. You could put a graphic equaliser on and make it sound exactly the same as the Gibson. So that's not a reason to choose the Gibson over the Epiphone necessarily. If the Gibson makes you feel better and inspires you more to play it, that would be a reason to buy the Gibson. We're not going to answer which one's better. They're both great for different reasons. So that's all I've got to say on the matter. Thank you very much for joining us and sticking with us. And I hope to see you again. Cheers. <laughs>